Hi guys, welcome to the Lore Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. We'll be looking at the Android Quiz app integration with SQLI database. This time, uh, we're going to be taking away uh, the data from the SQLI database down to the cloud, uh, where we're going to be using uh, the JSON and uh, we're going to use a, a library called Retrofit to do the network uh, interface, that's the network interaction between the, the online JSON uh, with the data. We're actually going to be saving to SQLite, but uh, we're not going to be using the old time uh, contract, DB helper and provider. We're actually going to be using the room, uh, the live data, and uh, we're going to be building it on the Android architecture. Uh, so I will implore you to stay by with this video. Uh, if you're eating this uh, video for the first time, I uh, will direct you to actually look at uh, the Android Quiz app integration with a SQLite database, which actually explains in detail how to set up uh, these uh, kind of uh, quiz application using the SQLite database. Because in this video, we're going to be looking uh, deeply into the network calls and saving to the room database and actually calling uh, using the uh, model and at the same time using the live data to make uh, uh, the background call to the SQLite database. So without much ado, I'll be adding straight to the implementation. I have the JSON uh, format in, the, in this uh, way, uh, which is right sitting in uh, uh, the domain unitpuzzlegame.com uh, forward slash JSON questions.json. It's a JSON file. Definitely, if you actually are running from the uh, web service or you have uh, a backend that actually speed out uh, different questions with options and answers, uh, definitely uh, you could get that uh, ripped out in a JSON format. Once you have it set up in a JSON format, you could uh, pass a folder and decompile JSON and uh, get the client, which is the Android app, to visualize this. So that's just the, uh, the, the flow. And I actually have that right there in this domain. So we're actually going to be consuming uh, this JSON in the Android application with questions, options A, option B, option C, if you want to go to D, and the answer. Uh, so you have the in an array of objects. Cool. So from here, I straight to Android Studio. And uh, we'll be starting up with the dependencies. Uh, we have different dependencies to actually introduce. Uh, we're going to be including the retrofit since that's going to be the network library uh, we're going to be using and also the converter json uh, which will actually uh, uh, help us to convert uh, the uh, the json to uh, to a java object which we're going to be using the model the pojo to set and get to actually decompile this json uh, you could actually introduce uh, add up the ok http the login interceptor if you want to intercept into the core and uh, we have uh, the code.json also if uh, you actually are relying on the Google JSON and uh, not only that you need to introduce the persistent room runtime uh, the compiler the testing and uh, we're introducing the live data which is the li architecture lifecycle extension uh, with the lifecycle view model which also the lifecycle live data uh, not leaving the annotation processor that is actually going to help for the annotation of this uh, live data called the lifecycle compiler 1.1.1. So all these uh, dependencies are very important. You Once you have that set up, you sync your application and you're ready to go. So I will actually be adding straight down to the Java classes. I won't be uh, looking at uh, the layouts because we've actually covered that in the previous tutorial, which I'll employ you to look at before uh, shifting down to this video. So let's focus more on how to take our data from the JSON, pass it right there into the SQLite database using the room architecture. So right there in the database package, we have the questions, which is the model, uh, where we're going to actually set up uh, the table. So start up from there. Uh, so you're going to actually use the, the persistent room, which you have the column info, the entity. Uh, this is where you actually set up our uh, uh, the columns that you'll be using and now we're having uh, the columns right there the primary key which is auto generated that is actually going to be incremented id uh, the columns that we're looking at here the question the answer option a b and c so that's just it and with a constructor right there so you could have different format of constructor to set and to get so we have that passing all the parameters all the fields and we have the set and get method 
of this so cool now we've actually set up a table name which is questions table with the columns in the questions uh, class so cool it's an entity class so you should understand what that is now we're going straight to the data access object uh, the DAO see so this is where you actually set up uh, the different implementation you want to to do uh, the query you're actually making to the SQLite database so you could select all from the questions table to fetch all questions this is the first uh, implementation we need so it's actually listening to the questions model and uh, it's a list and you attach it to the live data so that in any change in any change to the SQLite database this live data gets updated at the fly so that's just the sense of the live data we have the insert when you're inserting to the SQLite database so you set up that also that takes a questions object so it could actually use the constructor or use the set and get method the delete from if you want to delete from the table so you could actually specify any query you want to uh, to manipulate with the SQLite database probably select select specific columns or select uh, based on the ID or any flow so you're actually going to set that up in the DAO and now let's get to look at the repository the questions repository are right there this is actually going to interact uh, with the database uh, where you have the live data as well uh, to get all the questions and the insert now when you're inserting you're going to use the async tax and it's just is very advisable to run the next attack so that it's not going to actually run on the UI thread so that your app won't crash along the line so that's why you need to actually create a static class called insert async tag. so this is actually going to implement the DAO that's just the, the repository we implement the DAO now you have the insert async tag. this is going to insert all objects into uh, the uh, using the insert uh, method of the DAO and that gets directly down to the SQLite database I hope you understand what that means now let's get to look at the room database this is the database itself where you uh, specify the annotation at database and uh, with the class which is the questions model where we have the columns the version of the database and uh, you could actually see this this is like a boilerplate which could be reusable for you to actually create uh, your new database with an instance of uh, the questions room database and also get the application context and you set up your database with this format you could actually populate uh, the database with an already uh, existing data probably you want a data from 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 start but that is not really necessary based on this implementation because we are actually going to be using uh, the retrofit uh, and we're going to be pulling the JSON data and we're going to be saving that right into the SQLite database I think that's just what we need to focus on so let's get to look at the network uh, where we get to actually specify our retrofit here. we have the data service generator and uh, this actually have a static class or yes called the a static method rather called the create service it takes a parameter called the create service this is where you get to build the retrofit you add the converter factory where you pass the JSON Compactor files, so it's actually going to convert uh, any implementation to a model or the project, which is which is what we are actually pointing at. You have the base URL, which is the Unity Puzzle Game dot com. That's the first aspect of uh, the URL. We have the base URL and the endpoint. Majorly, the base URL doesn't change. The endpoint is the variable, is the changing aspect of uh, the the HTTP link. And now, okay, HTTP. Uh, could actually uh, set timeout uh, where you connect your timeout and the right timeout that's uh, optional if you really want to do that and for debug purposes you want to actually see your flow you want to see how the network calls will keep happening right there in the Android monitor or the lock cut uh, you could actually log a debug using the HTTP login interceptor and this will only happen when your app is in the build variant of uh, debug not in release so you build up ret retrofit you have uh, an object of retrofit right there working now the service class this is where you have your endpoints and uh, you could have your gets your puts your post your delete and uh, different implementation that's the verb that you need to manipulate with the endpoint now we are getting we're fetching data from uh, the link we had and this concludes the link JSON questions the JSON and what we're we going to do we're going to have it as a list because we're actually starting up with a list with an array and uh, you're going to have a question model as the podio uh, which we'll be listening to so the question model follows which we have here uh, where we have it as the questions uh, as a string option a b c as a, and the set and get as well 
so that's the model that we're going to use to decompile uh, the JSON so cool we have that set up now the last but not the least is the questions view model this extends the Android view model where you have the repository set up and uh, you're going to be using the live data to catch what are you going to return as several benefits you know, where you're going to put an observer on the data instead of polling for changes and only update the UI when data actually changes the repository is completely separated from the UI through the view model that's the essence of the view model now you have the live data as well which you still are uh, called from the uh, repository uh, you, could, you, could, you could see that and you point out the questions uh, we have that set up in the database model in the database package rather and you have the object the M all questions now you have a constructor of the questions model that's taken an application as a parameter and now this way you get to instantiate the questions repository uh, which we actually have all the implementation of the methods that we have and now uh, you're going to actually set all questions that you get in to the uh, the questions report uh, the, to the live data questions now you can see right there are you certain the repository gets all questions because this is actually going to point to the repository gets all questions let, let me let me get to look at this again who gets all questions over here and now that's the implementation you are having as you can see it right there and it's going to set that to the live data now look at the insert method this actually triggers the repository insert now the repository is still calling the questions repository here to actually insert using the async tax to insert it to the database now the get all is for the live data to fetch all now to either insert is to insert so you should understand what that means now the questions view model is actually handling that and is actually uh, trying to separate the UI from the implementation itself so that you once you're changing things you won't be changing all structure entirely you only change the view model and if you have to add up to the repository that's add up to the implementation you need to start up by adding it to the quest to the DAO the data abstract object and from there the repository is the interface to that and uh, the view model is the interface with the repository down to the DAO down to the table itself to actually get that done so cool now let's get to look how we're going to set up retrofit to consume this in the quiz activity quickly we're going to actually look at this in the questions fetch uh, method this way will interface with uh, the retrofit to call those data now you call the data service generator and uh, you have the call right there where you instantiate with a callback and uh, you always need a response on response which or on failure on response that's where you get to iterate through the list uh, that you're getting which is the question model list that's where you could extract the questions the option a the b and c so at the point of that you pass that to a new questions uh, which is actually called the constructor of the questions and you call the view model can you see right there to insert into uh, the, uh, this object since you are listening for the objects of question and the view model is going to actually insert with it get, go right there and move down to the repository to the DAO and interact down to the SQLite database so that's just how the flow is so you're actually going to do that from the main activity to fetch uh, the data and actually insert it using the view model into the SQLite database so we add an handler to this so that there will be a little delay so that this will be done first and you could also add uh, the progress bar so that this will be done first before you start fetching from the uh, SQLite database for the view so that finish up the take action which actually fetches the view and also display uh, the uh, the quiz uh, form for you where you could interact with and get to set and get to submit and get to do other things all other things were not uh, manipulated the only aspect is where we have to ex take away the data down to the cloud and uh, you could actually use retrofit to put it down and now we are using the new SQLite uh, architecture which is using the, the room uh, database and the live data and also uh, the repository uh, to actually get this uh, set up so without uh, much uh, explanations I hope you've been able to understand how this flow is the major focus is from the uh, is using the room database and retrofit you should be you should, you, should, you should be familiar with retrofit by now if you are if you don't please look at other videos of mine where I actually explain how to use retrofit so cool that's just the implementation we did here we focus more on the database and how to interact with it and integrate with it uh, using uh, the app the already existed app that we have so now the uh, the aspect of DB helper and provider has been outfaced 
we've actually migrated to a, no, a, a modern and uh, uh, the new form of actually setting up the SQLite database. So thank you guys for hanging out with me uh, throughout uh, this video and I'll reply you today on the source code which I'll be sharing to you uh, right there in the description and I'll be uh, actually committing this code to uh, the GitHub repository so that you could actually pick up the code for there and I'll be showing you uh, the screencast so that you actually see how the flow is now uh, since we've actually made that change. So thank you guys one more time and have a pleasant time. Bye bye.